Yesterday, I made a BRQS video. Today, it hit nearly 40 cents. Well, it actually did hit 41 cents pre-market. And I'm going to show you why you're going to need to be able to trade pre-market so you can either take profits or buy pre-market. The link is in the top pin comment. If you're not able to trade on your broker right now at four o'clock AM, you're messing up. You need to be able to do that. Link at the top pin comment for, for Moomoo. But the title of this video is Sell Mullen by BRQS. Now, that's not financial advice, and I'm not telling you to do that. You got to make your own decision. You got to look at the due diligence. But I still also believe in Mullen could pop from here from the van deliveries. Now, I still do think there was a there was many out there that didn't take their profits as it was going higher, $3, $4, over $4. But you can use that as a learning experience, and that's not a bad thing. So don't get down on yourself if you didn't take profits at four dollars. There's so many people out there messaging me like I should have took profits at three or four dollars. Now it's you know at one dollar. You can't get down on yourself on stuff like that. I'm gonna be here to tell you that you should be taking profits as it's moving higher, and it's just always gonna be your decision whether you end up doing that or not. But now that I got your attention in this video, I, I'm, I have five total stocks right here. GFAI, ILIS, CYBL, and another OTC play. Just drop a quick look on this video. Let's get it to 1,000 likes on this video. And I did want to mention one new play, a potential trade. This is not a long play. It's a potential trade. A lot of short interest. That's ticker Redbox RDBX. You may be like, Moon Market, what are you talking about? Why are you talking about Redbox? Aren't they bankrupt? They don't even exist, but they do still exist. They posted over 250 million revenue, but that's not the point. It's getting a ton of retail hype after a Netflix crash, and the short interest is very high. All I'm telling you right now, add it on your watch list. Look for a potential trade if you are interested in the plays. Just putting it on your radar, trying to drop these little gems every now and then so you guys can get all these opportunities. Now let's go over the BRQS chart, and I'm going to show you also why you're going to absolutely have to sign up for Moomoo with a link in the top pinned comment. They're also giving away six free stocks and one free share of Apple. The BRQS chart. So we were initially talking about this one in the private Discord back here when they announced a Qualcomm partnership, and then they went ahead and had a lot of consolidation, another pump, and... Recently, we were talking about this one right around this area. I was tweeting about it, but the point of this is you can take a look here at this white box and this yellow box. The white box is the after hours trading. This is where I uploaded that recent video. If you watch that recent video, let's say you, you decided you wanted to get in, you bought in, and then you woke up pre-market, but you, it, let's say you're on Robinhood, you, you weren't able to trade pre-market because it doesn't allow you, but on Moomoo, you can trade pre-market, and if you were able to do that, you were able to buy in right here after hours where you can't trade after hours on a lot of other a lot of other brokers. And then you were able to get potentially some profit out in pre-market at around, you know, four, five, six o'clock because it pumped all the way up to 41 cents. Now, what happened overall during the day? We went ahead. I was talking about these support levels in my, in my video yesterday. We came down to 32 cents, bounced right off that support level. And then we went ahead and broke through the next resistance at 33 cents. And then we broke above 36 cents. The 36 cents level was the main level I was talking about. We ended up getting a nice pump towards the end of the day to, to around 40 cents. Now let's go over all the stocks. We got ILUS to start it out currently sitting at 13 cents, $159 million market cap. They posted news today and they said they provided a progress update in line with its short and medium term milestones. Well, I pulled out the key points from this PR so we don't have to read the whole thing. In the process of agreeing and completing several acquisitions, Ford's emergency response technology subsidiary. They're growing their current subsidiaries. They're undergoing its audit, which is nearing completion. They're re reviewing options for shareholders to lock up shares. I'm going to personally do that with my shares that I, you know, I've been locking them up basically anyway, so I'm willing to lock mine up for a longer period of time. They're finalizing the share structure or the structure for its rollout of its Europe deal. So they got more Europe deals coming up. They're restructuring its subsidiaries in preparation for the planned participation on a major stock exchange. They're talking about the spin out. They're agreeing the acquisition of several companies. They ha have held further promising negotiations with an acquisition that, th that is achieving upward of 100 million in annual revenue, nearing the agreement of its first defense acquisition. And they're agreeing the acquisition of an emergency response communications company. They're in discussions with iBanks to go ahead and get some further funding for these acquisitions. The CEO stated, we have so many deals on the brink of completion and many large new opportunities that we didn't anticipate would be happening. Many deals are due to be announced very soon. And the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and the energy crisis has presented us with massive opportunities. We are evaluating a lot of opportunities that we hadn't planned on the start of during the start of the year, and 
they have an opportunity to become a dominant force in their sector. They've recently stated they would be announcing mind-blowing new developments very soon. And now let's take a look at the Eyeless chart. Eyeless is currently at 12.91 right now. We do have a little bit of support right here at 12.91. If we break below that level, look for 11.5. If we break below 11.5, you're gonna be looking at 10.3. But if we start moving up, to the upside, we're looking at that 14 cents break for, you know, even further upside. Taking a look at ticker CYBL, currently sitting at two cents, $136 million market cap. We did get news today. It was great news towards the end of the day. I know the stock is down about, what, 10% on the day, but they have finalized their quarter one 2022 results, our best quarter ever in company history. Here are the highlights with more details coming. Quarter one revenue of 6.2 million, up 14% from quarter four. Quarter one 2022 revenue beats quarter one planned by 39% and month to month up 4% setting the stage for the next three quarters. And I believe CEO Mark Smith has said the quarter one is usually the slowest quarter out of the entire year and quarter two, three and four are, you know, they get a lot more revenue, but they got their best quarter yet in quarter one, even though it's supposed to be the slowest quarter for the year. They've reported 8.1 million revenue for the entire year 2021 and quarter one 2022, they get 6.2 million to nearly get the entire year revenue last year in just one quarter in 2022 shows extreme growth is in fact happening. And these financials should be posted in a filing very soon, followed by an official press release. They always, they usually always post a PR about the results. Recently, I reviewed the entire one hour Q and A. You can pause through this. There's, these are all the catalysts I mean, there is so many, I'm not going to read off, off the whole list, but you can pause it, you can screenshot it, do whatever you want with it. And we do know that there's two possible acquisitions this quarter. Taking a look at the CYBL chart, and this is why I keep on pounding the table on these support levels, because I was talking about the 0193 support level, or the 0192, 0193 support level very recently, and it bounced right off of that. And I said, if we break below it, we could see 0167. That's our strongest support. But, and I said, it would be a little bit more aggressive. If you get in at here, if you were aggressive, you made a great trade already. Now we're looking to break this zero two one resistance. If we go ahead and break that, we're looking to break and hold 0.24. We recently did, but we were not able to hold it. Once we broke below, we went right back down to the zero one nine two support next stock ticker gfa i had a fantastic day right now i'm looking at it after hours we're currently at 83 cents so you know after really just tanking for a long period of time finally to get some life in this one is very great and early pre-market hit 97 cents so this is another reason why you need to be able to take or trade pre-market because a lot of the times stocks that are hot and get all this build up they pump pre-market and then people take profits pre-market and kind of the early bird gets a word the worm type thing. So you're going to have to use that Moomoo link in the top pinned comment. And you know, you're going to be able to take profits. You're going to be able to buy a good points. You're just going to be able to do a whole bunch of new stuff. If you can trade pre-market and after hours with that Moomoo link in the top pinned comment, they posted solid news today. Guard force AI announces initial U S robotic solution rollout, and they're going to begin it in, in New Jersey. And the robots are deployed in office buildings where they are tasked with disinfection duties on a trial basis. Future rollouts will include T-Series robots for reception services and restaurants, hotels, and malls. The next phase of service expansion will include applications such as delivery, security, and advertising. There is extreme growth in the robotics market. They're also in cybersecurity. We know that, and even Elon would agree with the robotics growth. He stated in his Tesla investor call that Tesla's humanoid optim Optimus robot will be worth more than the car business. So that's crazy. And yes, I'm also very bullish on Tesla long term as well. I think they're going to dominate in every single sector they're in. But GFAI expects 55 to 60 million revenue this year, and they're at a 31 million market cap. Today, they were up at 40 percent at one point on solid, but not the best news we've gotten yet or we have upcoming in the future. In May, they still plan to sign a definitive agreement to acquire eight new robotic companies that will bring in an extra 30 million revenue per year. They signed this on March or they told us this on March 21st that they signed the LOI, but the definitive where they're going to, you know, basically agree to complete this at some point is going to be by the end of May. And they're going to be getting eight different subsidiaries that's going to bring in 30 million revenue. Taking a look at the chart right now, we currently have support at 79 cent area. If we stay above that, hold above that, we're looking good. And the next level to break would be that 90 cent point. But if we break below 79 cents, you know, strongly and convincingly, I do believe that we could fill that gap at 67 cents again. 
but gaps don't always fill. And if you start moving higher, look for that 90 cent break. Next stock ticker, INTK, currently sitting right about three cents, up 1% on the day, $89 million market cap. This is the very promising OTC company that is, that is seeking extreme revenue growth throughout 2022. And we even got share reductions today. You know how we always talk about companies adding new shares? So it's refreshing to see a share reduction with a 300 million reduction taking away 8.9% of the outstanding share count. INTK posted a series of updates recently. They signed a deal with Nestle, a $361 billion company that will add 75 to 100 million revenue over the next five years. You can see it's a $127 share price. Nestle is actually on the OTC markets, if you didn't know that. They signed a deal with a new distributor in Spain and cross-selling product to a customer who already ordered 500,000 worth of product. The CEO is in Dubai to onboard a new distributor with a slew of existing customers and identified an immediate need for their product. And the CEO will host a Q&A on April 26th. So let's take a look at this chart. Currently for INTK, we've been bouncing off this support level at 0.0287. If we break below that convincingly, we could see 0.022 but we're looking strong to hold that 0 0.0287. We have resistance at 0 0.0327. So look for a break above that for the next leg higher. If we, if we start getting these catalysts coming in, the next resistance after that would be 0 0.0. Three, six, but right now we're looking good at that 0 0.0287 support. That is it for today's video. Make sure you drop a like before you head out. Join the private Discord with the link in the top pinned comment. We got a scanner in there. We got alerts. We got everything going in there. That is it. Peace.